In this video, we'll review highlights from the Supreme Court's new fair use opinion in the copyright infringement lawsuit involving Andy Warhol's silk screen images based on a photograph of the late singer Prince taken by celebrity photographer Lynn Goldsmith. We'll look at this opinion against the backdrop of content created by artificial intelligence. This case pits a content creator's freedom to use and transform original content into new content against the creator's original work and their right to protect that work from being copied by others without their permission or without paying royalties. So here we have the Supreme Court's opinion in Andy Warhol Foundation for the Visual Arts, Inc. versus Goldsmith et al. As you can see, Justice Sotomayor delivered the opinion of the court for the majority. It was a seven to two opinion. It states that this copyright case involves not one, but two artists. The first, Andy Warhol. His images of products like Campbell's soup cans and of celebrities like Marilyn Monroe appear in museums around the world. Warhol's contribution to contemporary art is undeniable. The second, Lynn Goldsmith, is less well-known, but she too was a trailblazer. Goldsmith began a career in rock and roll photography when there were few women in the genre. She captured some of the 20th century's greatest rock stars, Bob Dylan, Mick Jagger, Patti Smith, Bruce Springsteen, and as relevant here, Prince. We've got a photograph here in the opinion itself of the original work that was created in 1981. It's the photo of Prince that Goldsmith took. Then on the next page, the court is showing us an image of Warhol's Vanity Fair work. This was the one that he made and licensed from Goldsmith. He had permission and so did Vanity Fair to publish this. But then in 2016, as we see here, Condi Nash published another one of the silkscreen images that Warhol created from that photo without permission of the photographer. Then the court gives us an example of Goldsmith's photo on the cover of Musician Magazine, where they actually got her permission to use it and paid her a modest royalty of $1,000. Then we've got three more examples here from People Magazine, Rolling Stone, and Time, where they actually used the photographs taken by Goldsmith with her permission and gave her credit for taking the photos. And then we've got the silkscreen prints photograph, which of course Condi Nast published without the photographer's permission and without giving her credit. Then moving on, the court illustrates here in figure six how Warhol's orange silkscreen portrait of prints superimposed on Goldsmith's portrait photograph shows that there was very little alteration that Warhol actually made to the underlying original photograph work. And then, of course, in the appendix, we have all of the 16 works based on Lynn Goldsmith's photographs, 14 silkscreen prints, and two pencil drawings. The works are collectively known as the Prince series. You be the judge. Is this a transformative work of the underlying photograph or is this just a cheap knockoff, a ripoff that does not qualify as fair use? So of course the photographer sued Andy Warhol's foundation for using her photograph without permission and not paying her any royalties. That case went first into the district court. In the district court, the Andy Warhol Foundation argued that his artwork was fair use because Warhol sufficiently transformed the photo and thereby gave new meaning to the work. The district judge agreed that Warhol's prints artwork transformed the photos of prints from a, quote, vulnerable, uncomfortable person into an iconic, larger-than-life figure. But on appeal, the photographer Lynn Goldsmith challenged the district court's decision to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. The court in that case overturned the district judge's ruling, finding that the district court had placed way too much emphasis on the subjective meaning of the work. The Warhol Foundation then appealed that decision to the United States Supreme Court, which agreed to hear the case. In a 7-2 decision, the Supreme Court ultimately held that Warhol's use of Lynn Goldsmith's photo of prints without her permission was in fact copyright infringement. Justice Sotomayor wrote the majority opinion. So let's take a look at highlights from her opinion now. So here we have the majority opinion that Justice Sotomayor authored. She states that Lynn Goldsmith's original works, like those of other photographers, are entitled to copyright protection even against famous artists like Andy Warhol. 
the use of a copyrighted work may nevertheless be fair if, among other things, the use has a purpose and character that is sufficiently distinct from the underlying original. In this case, however, Goldsmith's original photo of Prince and Warhol's copying use of that photograph in an image licensed to a special edition magazine devoted to Prince share substantially the same purpose and the use is of a commercial nature. At the bottom in the footer of that opinion, she goes on to state that because this court agrees with the Court of Appeals, that the first factor of fair use likewise favors the photographer Goldsmith, the judgment of the Court of Appeals is affirmed. And so, in other words, the court limited its discussion and its analysis in this case to the sole issue of the first fair use factor, which looks at the purpose and character of the use of the new work, including whether such use is of a commercial nature or if it is created for a nonprofit educational purpose which the latter would weigh in favor of fair use, whereas if it's commercial in nature, that weighs strongly in favor of a copyright infringement if done without permission. Justice Kagan and Chief Justice Roberts dissented from the other justices. Kagan, who wrote the dissenting opinion, was extremely critical of the majority's holding. She writes, still more troubling are the consequences of today's ruling for other artists. If Warhol does not get credit for transformative copying, who will? And when artists less famous than Warhol cannot benefit from fair use, it will matter even more. Inhibiting subsequent writers and artists from improving upon prior works, as the majority does today, will frustrate the very ends sought to be attained by copyright law. It will stifle creativity of every sort. It will impede new art and music and literature. It will thwart the expression of new ideas and the attainment of new knowledge. It will make our world poorer. And so those are some very strong words, some very critical words from Kagan of the dissent. And apparently the Chief Justice Roberts in a bipartisan move agrees with Kagan there, agrees that the majority opinion here is not good for the artist, for the economy, or for any kind of creative expression. The next question you might be wondering is, what are the implications of this decision on our use of generative AI tools to create new works of art, new images, new written works, and new videos, deep fake videos? There are all kinds of new generative AI tools out there. How does this opinion affect them? Well, I have several thoughts that I'll share with you on that. First, we've seen generative AI tools that convert text to image like Stable Diffusion and Dolly. We've seen examples of people telling the AI to create images in the style of a particular artist, such as Picasso, Van Gogh, or even in the style of Andy Warhol. The Supreme Court's opinion here makes these types of works less likely to qualify for fair use, all other things being held equal. And this is the concern that Kagan was expressing there in that dissenting opinion. The second takeaway applies to the method by which you alter photos using AI tools or even just non-AI tools like Photoshop. In the Warhol case, the Supreme Court pointed out that the only alterations that Warhol made to the underlying original photo were he cropped the face of prints, he traced the outline of his face, and then he added a new color to it. The court suggested that greater changes are needed to the underlying original image for it to qualify as fair use. So will this case open the floodgates as Justin Kagan warned for people claiming that AI generated images based on another artist's style is copyright infringement? I would say doubtful. This case is not actually that groundbreaking. It simply reaffirms the fact that using someone's copyrighted work without permission must qualify as transformative to be fair use. There's still no black and white test for determining when a new work is transformative, fair use versus copyright infringement. But the Warhol case makes clear that merely and simply adding or applying your own style on top of somebody else's original work is not enough to qualify for fair use. The more dramatically it differs from the underlying original, the more likely it is to qualify as transformative use as opposed to copyright infringement. The greater the similarity between the two and the more distinguishable 
the original work is in your new image, the more likely you have committed copyright infringement. That being said, you have to also consider all of the other factors, the commercial versus non-commercial use. If you like this video and you want more content on fair use and artificial intelligence and all of the new tools that are all over the place now, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and turn the bell notification icon on. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.